Okay, well, so guys, I want to welcome you all to episode two. So today, I think we're actually going to start painting. Now, remember last week we talked about how you're going to gesso over an old painting, give it some texture and all that stuff there. Well, now my three layers of gesso is dry, my texture is perfect, so now it's time to start painting. So first you want to take a look at your canvas. So normally I go by the divisions of threes, you know, I'll do a third of the painting and all that stuff. But you know what, for this one, how about we will basically split it in half. So let's, right here, I think I want the furthest part of my painting to be. And you know, this will be the uh, foreground and all that stuff. And then this will be our furthest point here. This will be our mid-ground. So yeah, we'll do, yeah, yeah, let's do foreground, mid-ground, background. And this will all be in here. So yes, you do have to keep track of all this stuff even when you do an abstract painting. Because even if you do throw just paint on a canvas or whatever, you still need to have a start and a finish and you want to do all this stuff because there are still rules you have to abide by. So yes, let's start that. So you know what? In the comments below, I'll give a list of all the colors of paint and all that stuff I use in case I go a little bit fast and whatever. And I'll kind of move my palette a little closer so hopefully you guys can see it in view and whatever. So, all right, well, let's get started. So I think the first color we want to do is we want to do our, our background. And I'm going to use a cerulean blue because we're going to, yeah, we're going to talk about the happy sky. So yeah, so let's do a cerulean blue back here in the back. And maybe the sun will be setting here and that will use a, uh, ooh, you know what? We're gonna use a transparent yellow oxide because oh, that color is beautiful. And then we'll go back and then we'll highlight the clouds and stuff like that. But first, let us start with our cerulean blue. So let's get everything started here. And I use um, just normal linseed oil whenever I'm painting. And of course I use a odorless paint thinner to clean the brushes and all that stuff. So yes, let's start with cerulean blue, which I happen to have right here. And we're going to start with uh, yeah, with that, and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, we'll put put some cerulean blue on the thing. So yes. And if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have or anything like that. So now we're going to get us some brushes. So yes, we're going to need big brushes because we are painting a big canvas. So we're going to start right off the bat with some big old brushes. Alrighty, well, let's get started here. So like I said, I like to thin my oils down a lot with linseed oil just because I like painting thin. And so, so we're just going to thin out our cerulean blue here. And you can paint with them right out of the tube or you can mix them up, whatever. But for this pick your color, I'm going straight out of the tube, and here we go. As you can see, your paint is picking up on all those texture lines that we put in before with the tissue paper. So, And you can see how thin I'm actually painting with it because we're actually going to be, this is going to be our background color, so we're going to go really thin with our cerulean blue, like really, really, really thin. So don't be afraid to, uh, to thin it out. So. You know what, I think we're gonna do some like clouds coming in over here on this here. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of space in there and I might come back and, yeah, let's do that. Cause it's almost like the blue sky is just there. It's just going to be there as an afterthought. Like we know it's always there, so it's going to be like the 
foundation of everything. So yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll kind of start, we'll kind of start our, uh, yeah, we'll kind of start our other layer of clouds, like right in here. So we won't go that far down with it. See how thin I'm painting with this with this oil paint because we literally just want it to be just the background of our painting. So we're gonna keep it really thin. And um, I'm not quite sure how many episodes we'll go over to finish this painting, but you know, I think that we'll keep it down to probably 30 minute episodes and all that fun stuff. That way you guys don't spend three hours a night watching this. And so, alrighty. So now we've got our base color. As you can see how the paint will really bring out those textures that you put in the canvas before, which is what you really, really, really want. And that adds just life to the painting, in my opinion. So, yes. All right, so we got our blue skies in. And yeah, I think that's about as far as we're gonna do because, you know, right around in here, it's probably gonna be our horizon line. We want our furthest point. So this is where we're gonna start breaking things up in here. And like I said, this is almost like the fair background. So let's soften that line there a little bit. All right, now chances are we'll probably go back at another time and we'll kind of darken that blue up. But for right now, I think we'll keep it at that. So now we're going to clean our brush and we will go about. Starting to add in the other grays and whites and all that fun stuff. So now all I do to clean my brush, I just use some simple paint thinner in between brush exchanges, and I just simply just get all the paint off the brush. And then after the painting or painting session, I will go back and actually clean the brushes with some brush cleaner or soap and water and all that stuff because. Brushes are not cheap, so you want to keep them clean and working properly because you uh, can't really sell a painting for a lot of money if you don't use proper equipment. That's why, uh, me personally, I'm a huge advocate of just going ahead and buying uh, the better quality paints because the lower brand paints, they uh, use a lot of fillers in with their in with their paint and stuff so they'll use um, just cheap fillers and a lot of chalk and all that stuff to fill in and blend down the natural pigments so you want to keep your pigments nice and clean all right so let's figure out here what we want to do now um why don't we go ahead and we will start doing this part here and let us see here Why don't we, yeah, see it's all part of the process, is that uh, the one fun, um, I guess, improv or inspirational thing about painting that I enjoy is like just painting completely off the cuff, which is what we're doing today. So I'm not exactly sure what colors we're picking until we get there. So I want to use a, you know what, I want to use a kind of like a neutral gray and I want to use, um, let's use a titanium white because it is a nice warm summer day. And um, yeah, 
So we're going to use our warmer colors on our on our white scale and stuff. So let's just kind of kind of block everything off using our kind of like a neutral kind of like a neutral gray here. I'm going to just block everything off. And then we'll go back and kind of add some accents in with the whites and stuff. And uh, like I said, uh, in the comments below, I will give a list at the end of the painting session about all the colors I used and brands and things of that nature. Now, let us use... Ooh! You know what? I'm going to toss some iridescent silver in there because every cloud has a uh, silver lining. That's what they say anyway. So, yes. And you know... I think this painting might even look like clouds, but hey, we're going to have a great time painting it, aren't we? Alright, so I'm going to use a smaller brush because I want to use a little bit more detail in there. So let us peruse our brush drawer and see what we got here. Alrighty. Alright, I found us a brush here. And it's a number 14 flat. I uh, personally enjoy using just the, the flat brushes because it allows me to get a nice hard edge in between our color changes that I tend to like. So, alrighty. So why don't we start by blocking it in with our little bit of some of our neutral gray here. And so yeah, we're just going to go up and just kind of block this in here. Not quite sure where we're gonna go with it, but you know. And I do know we at least want to cover up the edges of our blue, so we want to keep our blue in the background. So we're just going to. And like I said, this is just to this is just to block it off. And you know, we're not really we haven't really started painting yet. We're just kind of blocking everything off. Before we forget, we should go ahead and mark where we want our center line to be. You know what? I'm going to use some, I'm going to use some of that iridescent silver to just to go ahead and draw us a line. So that will give us a future reference in case we forget and we keep going where we actually want our like horizon line to be per se. So let's let me shoot about right here. And since it's clouds, nothing's going to be straight or whatever. So we're just going to. Yeah, we're just going to kind of draw some line all the way across there. There we go. Looks good to me. Alright, so this will end up being our horizon line per se. So, we'll go on from there. Alright, so now let's, you know what, let's add some silver in. Let's add some silver in here. And what we're going to do, so I think we're going to put like uh, the sun or whatever kind of like here and we'll end up outlining all this with that lovely um, transparent yellow oxide which is an awesome color. Alrighty, so let's see where were we here. Let's draw some, some stuff in here. And I'm basically just going back and just just kind of making rough shapes right now. We'll go back at a later time and we'll we'll clean those up. But we're just getting started. And that's the wonderful thing about painting is that you don't have to be in a hurry. So take your time with this, and it will be just fine. Patience. It's all about patience, my friends. All about patience.
Alright, so let's continue with our blocking here. And, you know, we're probably going to make this a little darker, but we still want to start with a nice uh, foundation so we're not painting just off the raw canvas. And, because we want our, basically our lightest part of this here to be this gray. So, we're just going to continue on with that. Let's see what happens. And of course, as always, if you guys are enjoying the show, please uh, hit that subscribe button so you can get the notifications of the next episode that's going to happen. And we can all see how this painting is going to turn out together, shall we? I don't know yet. And that's the fun thing about painting is that we don't truly know what really is going to happen until, well, until we finish it. So we shall see how it goes. So we're just going to go ahead. You know what? Why don't we go ahead and we're going to cover this whole thing here with our base of our uh, neutral gray. So I'm gonna switch back to a bigger brush because we got a lot of canvas to, to cover. As you can see, I'm really thinning my, uh, my oil paints down because I love to paint thin. You might not be able to tell a huge difference between the uh, the colors and the raw canvas at this point but the good thing about layering them down is that you want to start with a good foundation and this basically we're building the painting up from a foundation aspect and we're going forward from there so this is like the first stone in our foundation if you will so chances are a lot of this gray we're going to end up covering up but it is a good foundation of what we want And if you're just tuning in, I want to say welcome, everyone. Welcome. We are, you know, we're painting a sunset or clouds. I'm not quite sure yet what we're painting, but we will find out. And as you're approaching that horizon line that we talked about earlier, you just want to go right up to it. Don't want to paint over it, just go right to it. And we want to keep that, that silver involved. So what I do in one of my techniques is, this is why I like using the flat brushes, is that you coat your, you know, you coat your brush really heavy with paint, as you can see there. We coat it really heavy. And as we auto-focus, maybe, there we go. So we coat it really heavy. Then you're basically just going to hold your brush like so. Then you want to come down with a nice, about a 45 degree angle. You're just going to go back and forth and you're going to, it's going to help you cut that line. You're just going to brush it right to that line. And we really want to keep that, that silver line there as a base. You just cut right to it. Then from there you're gonna up brush. You're just gonna take it, and you're just gonna kind of up brush from it, then you're just gonna blend it back and forth. You do all the way down the canvas with it. And then since we're probably gonna do some sort of action like right in here, 
we're just gonna kind of fade it up and we're kind of gonna leave this blank for right now to really figure out what we're gonna do. But we wanna keep this going. You're gonna up brush and then down brush. Just kind of blend it and give it some motion because you really want your paint to pick up that, um, that texture underneath. And it will display really well. So you're just gonna kind of up brush from the line. Sometimes you have to hold your canvas to keep from bouncing on you, but it's going to up brush and all that. Now, one important rule about remembering when painting with oils, it is like painting with a life form. So sometimes you have to, you know, be kind of rough with it, and you have to realize that it will take over if you're not strong enough to to fight back with it. So don't be afraid to really hammer down with that with that brush and really just force that paint to go where you want it to because if you don't, it will definitely take control and you'll get discouraged and you'll be like, ah, oh, I can't do this. But trust me, you can, I promise. It'll be okay. And the one beautiful thing about painting and artwork is that no one can tell you that it's bad because if you like it all that needs to be done so don't worry about it and so i think we've got some more action going on in here so we'll leave this blank and we might leave this blank in here because we're not quite sure what's going to happen with our movement of our clouds and the wind because you've always got to keep chasing the wind my friends don't give up i know it's hard Trust me, I've been there. And just keep chasing the wind. So, just, so there we go. So um, now we kind of have a nice even coat of this. It's kind of like a neutral gray. It's not really light, it's not really dark, but it's a nice neutral right in the middle, which is what we want because this will give us a good foundation to build up or bend it, build in with. Because we really want people, when you look at this painting, to go into it. So, this is some nice colors for that right there. So now, let us go back and try to figure out what exactly we're going to be doing with this painting from this point on. So we definitely know that this is our furthest point back. This here, we're going to do something with our mid-ground. So we need to go ahead and start laying that in. So why don't we use a... Um, a titanium white for that and we will because we want to keep in mind and that way we won't forget that that's also going to be our uh, mid-ground so why don't we go ahead and we'll kind of lightly lay that in and um, I know the lighting somehow might not show up all the way on uh, this but it's there I promise all right so I'm gonna grab the big tube of titanium white and like I said, we're just going to just layer it in. This is just going to be the foundation. So we're going to go back and it adds a nice uh, creaminess to our layer. And it will allow the oil, other oil paints to kind of glide across it. It won't be so abrasive and as rough as the raw gesso. So that's why we're doing that. So I'm going to clean the smaller brush just for a little bit. All right. So now... We're going to, and um, I use a linseed oil. It's a boiled down linseed oil. So when you mix it in with your whites, you know you might be worried that oh the linseed oil is yellow. So I don't really want to worry about my yellow, whites turning yellow. Don't have to worry about that. Will not happen. All right. So let's see here. Oh, how about? Okay, we'll. well I guess we're just going to go for it. So let's, we'll have something here that will be there, and we'll kind of go down. Now, chances are this white is not going to be showing up at all on the uh, camera footage, but just know that it's there, and as you're painting, you'll actually be able to see it, so, because it's, <laughs> I know, trust me, you're like, Hey Jesse, you're filming white on a white background, painting white, so 
guy know, trust me. But it's there. You'll know it's there as you're attempting to paint this. So I'm just going to kind of put it there. Do something in here with it. actually switch to the big brush here because I got a lot of real estate to cover with this titanium white. So, and like I said, do not be afraid to use your paint. You know, because a lot of people are like, oh man, that's expensive. How do you use that much of it? Well, yeah, it's expensive, but you have to you have to use the expensive stuff to get what you want sometimes. Alright. See, we're pretty much just covering that whole bottom face here. And it's going to be the same principle as before, is that you want to get right up to that silver line, and then we're going to back brush away from it. So the same, same principle. We're going to get all the way up to it, and we're just going to back brush. So we want to keep that silver there, but we're just going to get right up to it. Sometimes it's kind of fun to just enjoy the whole painting process and just let your mind wander and daydream about stuff. Cause, you know, it's kind of fun to do. That's what I do a lot of times. And that's how, you know, you're really getting into a painting when you really want to just lose yourself in it. And when you do that, you really let the creative juices flow and the um, viewer, when they see your artwork, they will connect with that and they'll actually start to feel the connection. And so it's okay to kind of lose yourself in your artwork. It's almost preferable. All right, so we went ahead, or I went ahead, and just covered the whole thing with titanium white just because why not? So uh, I want to go back and use um, not really different shades of white, but let's, um, why don't we add a little bit of, a little bit of some kind of blues I got here. Mm. 
you know what? How about a touch of Persian blue? Yeah. Yeah, we do that. A little bit of Prussian blue. How about that? Just a little though. Just a little bit because this is a very powerful pigment and it will literally take over everything. So when I say just a little, just a little bit. As in like just a bare touch of it. Because you'll see as soon as I put it on this canvas um, how much it will tend to take over. So... You know what? I'm not even going to clean the brush. I'm going to use a little bit of the white residue that was on it. Put some linseed on it. And when I say just a touch, I mean literally. I mean it is just a touch of the of the blue. And we're going to go back and we'll start, uh, how about here? And this is where we'll kind of use it to outline stuff. I mean, you can see how powerful that blue was and how it just kind of literally just almost just takes over everything. We're going to use it to kind of, and we also want like these lines here, we want to bring the viewer into the middle of our painting because this is where all of our action is. So we're going to want people to look at it and we're going to want these lines here to kind of go inward toward it. So. That's kind of like what we're doing now. So we're just kind of adding these inward lines here. You know what? I'm going to add a little bit of that neutral gray to it. To kind of help a little bit here. Just a little bit, because it will take over. And I'm just kind of roughing, you know, roughing these lines in. And we will be changing them later on. I just want to kind of rough them in a little bit. And we'll use these as, you know, obviously I'll get a little darker with them. And so as it progresses, progresses but you know I just kind of want to add something in there so we kind of can see where everything is going now from this point on um, we're going to go back and we'll darken this up I'll use some darker grays and all that stuff so more more different shades of whites and everything of that nature so this will go there Okay, so now we got that there. All right, so I think we have majority of our lines. So now let's go back and, you know what? Ooh, let's add some of that silver. You want to? That'd be kind of fun. Yes. Ooh, silver and pewter. How about that? That sounds like a great combination. All right, so I'm gonna clean all that blue off my brush here. And let's see, where it is? Do I have any? Oh, I do have some pewter. All right. So yes, let's let's add up some pewter and some silver. That'd be pretty. Yes, we'll do. That's what we'll do. We'll do this part here in shades of blue, pewter, and silver down at the bottom because, well, I think it'd be pretty. So fun, fun, fun. Well, I hope everybody's enjoying these videos. Um, 
if you are if you have any questions or suggestions please leave a comment below and I will answer any question you have or any comment or anything like that so yes so let's add some pewter silver now pewter is a beautiful color it has a, has a nice sparkle to it but at the same time it is a little bit of uh, translucent which is really going to show you your underpainting because uh, you'll notice as this uh, program progresses and we paint more and more paintings together that I really love painting with uh, translucent colors so it's all about the uh, all about the underpainting for me so tell you what so what you know what let's just jump in and we'll just start right at the bottom and well, you know what no take that back let's start from this point here and we'll move outward so yes and you're going to notice the pewter is going to look a lot like the silver but the awesome thing is with that titanium white base that we put down it's really going to mix in with it and it's going to give it a nice nice flowing um, effect to it so I'm just going to go right on in there we're going to go right up to our line and now remember so this painting is all about the wind and all about movement so we don't want to if we're not careful we're going to end up making it look like ice cream cones so we don't want to do that so we want to keep the brush constantly moving and constantly going back and forth especially when it comes up to these lines you don't want to make a straight line all the way across you want to keep it very fluid so you're just going to go back and forth when it comes to these lines and this will give you that nice mixture of a solid state because the fascinating thing about the human eye when it views art and stuff especially paintings your mind automatically wants to put shapes and textures together so you don't have to worry about doing a photo realistic um, painting because the viewer's eye will go ahead and automatically put things together that's why some people like using or looking at abstract art because there's no wrong way to look at it so we will so we're just going to come up we're just going to randomly go over our line in places with different textures and different values of the paint and so we'll end up getting this nice rough thing but we still have our line and we've got that beautiful silver underneath it that will pop through see and then you go back and we'll just gently kind of blend this all together and that titanium white base that we put down will mix with that layer of color that we put on to really just blend it all together and give it a nice nice movement Like when it comes to like these blue lines you put in just kind of take your brush and we're going to blend it right on in there between the lines because we want to still keep that blue line that we're going to put there as a marker so we kind of all know where it's there some white here what we're going to do is we're just going to come down we're going to down brush where that gray line was then we're also going to up brush on the other side of it that's going to give us a beautiful line there 
and I'm going to keep the blue, I'm actually just going to keep going back and forth, all the way there. So as you can see, we still have our dark line here, but we're kind of faded on either side of it. So we're going to continue to do that all the way over, all the way over. And this is that beautiful pewter. You know what? Why don't we add a little bit of silver into it now? So we're just going to... And we're not going to clean our brush off because we want to keep all of our colors on our brush because we're mixing them all together. So we're going to go back and add a little bit of silver here. So we're just going to go back and touch right on top of our blue to make us, give us our silver, give us our silver outline, if you would. Because, you know, every cloud is a silver, silver outline, right? See, I'm painting really thin, and we are just honestly just moving the paint around at this point to get us what we want, and we're going to end up with these lines that we like. So, you know, I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. So, again, we want to keep all the paint moving. Silver here. And we're going to do the same thing we did there. We're going to do our silver here and we're going to back brush it and then we're going to come down and we're going to put some silver there. might not even end up being clouds by the time we're done with it. Which is okay, because that's the beautiful thing about doing abstract artwork. You just kind of have to start with, you know, something in mind, and you keep going from there. All right, so we're gonna switch back to our bigger brush here. Now, our bigger brush still has some of that white on it, so we're gonna use that. And then come in, and really just hammer down on this canvas here to really go and move this paint around to kind of like show it where we want it to be and everything like that. Like I said, don't be afraid to really hammer down with that with that brush to really get your your oil and your paint to move because sometimes it can be a little stubborn and you just gotta show it, you know, show it who's boss. glad you guys tuned in and decided to uh, watch me and kind of you know watch this series and all that it will be great fun I promise and hopefully you will learn something out of it or if you just want to sit back and enjoy and watch art being made that's that's quite fine too all right so you can see kind of bringing the paint down to our blue line here I'm even going over it a little bit just to kind of rough it up a little bit but to make sure that we got everything covered. Remember how I told you that little touch of that Prussian blue takes over a lot? And remember, this was all done with that little touch of it. So, yeah, it's, it's a powerful pigment. It really is. And so, okay, so what we got going on here, if you notice, our brush strokes are going this way and that way, and it's kind of doing this weird thing in the painting. We don't really want that to happen, so we're just going to go back and just we're just going to brush it flat for right now, and that will allow us to go back and add some better texture in later on in the painting. So, but remember, we're still in building the foundation process of it. We still have a long way to go on this journey of ours. So do not be in a hurry. Don't try to rush things and all that fun stuff. So 
It's all good. It's all good. So it's okay every once in a while to step back, look at your painting and figure out, okay, where do I want to take it from here? Well, as you can see, we've already got some lines starting to develop. We've got a nice, you know, some nice lines going in here. I really like this part in here and this part in here we'll work on. And so, you know, everything's coming together just quite nicely the way we want it to. Now, so we've got our spots right down here at the very bottom. We want this to be the furthest point out in the painting. So what are we going to add to it? Well, we're going to go back and we're going to add, don't think I want to use, you know what, let's, let's just use some flake white to really just flatten this out. And then we'll go back and we'll use a uh, darker gray or a darker blue to really add in some of uh, some textures and all that. So first we'll cover a lot of that with some flake white and that will be our foundation. And then we'll go back and we'll add some darker colors in to really lighten up the um, shadows and all of that. So but we're going to clean off our brush. oil to it so we can really thin it out because flake white is a very powerful white it's a uh, it will just it'll cover everything if you're not careful so yeah so we're just going to go we're just going to start you know covering this entire area down here with our flake white as our base and as you can see it i mean it covers that blue and that silver right up which is fine. Kind of mix in a little bit of our blues with it. Also, be really careful with your flake whites because it is also a very dangerous paint because it does contain lead. So, do not let your studio pets get a hold of your flake white tubes of paint, and you know, just, just be careful using it. Just, just don't eat it. I mean, you know, it's sad that you actually have to tell people, "Hey, don't eat paint chips," but uh, apparently you do. So, this is my disclaimer: please don't eat flake white. It's not good for you. It contains lead. It's just, it's not good for you. So. That's not today's YouTube challenge, is not eat flake white. So, as you can see, it's also a lovely color, and it's also a little bit translucent at the same time. So, or transparent, I should say. So, I want to back and I want to definitely use it everywhere. And the great thing is, as you're painting and you got that blue down, you will notice that the flake white will actually, since it is a transparent white, it will actually just go right over the blue and kind of give it a little bit more um, depth and all that. So it's going to be really awesome when we go to uh, add in some of our shadows and all that fun stuff to it.
right, so tell you what guys, I know it's been a long video this session, so why don't we cut this at the end of episode one, and we will see what else we'll do to this painting on episode, is this one or two? Wow, this is episode two, holy cow. So on the next episode, which will be episode three, we will add in a little bit more texture. We'll go in and add in a bit more depth into our bottom here, and then we'll add in this stuff up in here. So tell you what guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey, and we shall see. It's almost like we're painting this painting together. I kind of enjoy it. We're gonna see where it goes. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, and yeah, thank you guys so much for joining, and I will see you guys soon in the next episode. Bye-bye. Much love.